See, when he says happy Monday down there in the message, what he means is happy moan day. <laughs> he wants you to think that wasn't his intent, but it is. You know what, man? I, I may like that one better, DK, because I'm moan to all my friends. You call me moan at times. or I'm, I'm big moan, rub moan. Uh, so moan day is probably more fitting, man. What you think about that? I'm okay with it. I have a really cool surprise for you here after the dinging of a certain bell. What's cra- I have no idea. So I'm going to hit this no, button. No, I here. have not told him. <laughs> here we go. Mm-hmm. The other day on the Ramon Foster show, we were talking about um, the passing of the late, great Andy Russell yeah, and a- another member of the 1970s Steelers family uh, who's been lost. And we were talking about players who have been, uh, you know, kind of left out, I guess you could say snubbed by the Hall of Fame mm-hmm. because of the overall greatness of that defense in particular not that a lot of offensive guys didn't get in or deserve to get in too right but when you look at that crew and who didn't get in the name that i cited moan the first name that i cited as being overlooked and the one who deserves most to get in was the late lc greenwood lc greenwood yep and you and you agreed mm-hmm. and i get a in our in on youtube in our comments I get a comment here. I'm going to read this to you. It says, thanks for saying my dad is next in line. I pray it happens one day. I wish he would have lived to enjoy getting in. And I confirmed that it was, in fact, Fernando Greenwood, who's a five-month member of this show. Wow. Wow, DK. Ah, geez. So I write back, wait, you're LC's son? Really? And he writes back, yep, miss him every day. Fun fact, he wasn't a lover of football. Basketball was his first love. His generation was a family of giant men. He and all of his brothers were six foot three plus. And that also reminded me of something else that you've talked a lot about on this show, which is play all sports, love all sports. You don't have to fixate. You certainly don't have to have your kids fixating. Anyway, this was just really, really cool. And I'm thinking, wait to share it with him on the show. That is awesome. Thank you for, for checking us out, being in tune to Still a Nation. Your your dad should be in that conversation. Um, I hate how the, the Hall of Fame does that. Um, we talked about this before. They, they act like there has to be a pecking order as far as getting in. And you mean to tell me a guy that was in that era, one that big, and that contributed that much to that team in that era isn't in yet, man. Like you said, like his son said, that is – that's shameful on the hall. Um, I've had some people say they like it that way, that not everybody gets in like the NBA does it. I'm I'm different on that one. If you deserve to get it, and they know it, that's that's the thing that gets me, DK, is the NFL Hall of Fame knows those guys are supposed to be in. Yeah, and they they, 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 they know they the caliber gatekeep. of the player. Yep. Yeah, they gatekeep. We're not talking about a, a, a role player. We're talking about a, a, a main character. You know, DK, and that's that's what's so terrible about it, man. Fernando, thanks for joining us, by the way. Yeah, again. it's it's it it made me think a lot about the whole too many Steelers or Steelers fatigue was a term that used to come I've up heard. a lot. Steelers fatigue, because not only were there the the Steelers of the 1970s, but there were then <laughs> multiple other generations, and I'm not sure that you punish the. Success. Yeah. That's what you're punishing. You're okay. punishing success. Look, man, if there was a whole row of Atlanta Falcons waiting to get in, okay, I'd be like, go nuts. Okay. Open the door. Have a whole new wing. Uh, a month ago at the actual Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, they began a promotion that was aimed just at Steelers fans, that this is going to like an opportunity to see Steelers memorabilia and Steelers things like at no other point. You know what other franchise they can do that with? Who's that? 
that would be nobody. <laughs> okay. There are a lot of other players in there, obviously, from a lot of other teams. Okay. Yeah. But there's only one that you can do that with. And there's no crime in it. There was no crime in putting Donnie Shell in undrafted free agent, who completed the greatest draft class of all time, and he augmented it by being the fifth Beatle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy, man. DK, is, is football too sacred in America since it's ours? Um, I had this some stars right here, man. Uh, D put on there, kind of like TJ not getting defensive player of the year. Uh, as far as LC not getting, like too much success. Yeah, I don't think the I don't think TJ's is, is related to this. No, I it's think, not. But I'm just saying yeah. as far as the way the vote getters, right? The, the way they view it. I'm speaking I, I, about them and how they do football. Yeah, I see what you're saying. In TJ's case, I think this was just a bunch of people falling for the latest new stat and thinking that they wanted to look smart and show that they were all advanced and everything else and said, well, look at all of his – what was the what was the stat again? Miles uh, Miles – oh, my God. Yeah. Win, rush rate. Whatever, okay? Yeah. He, uh, almost – Okay, is uh, horseshoes and hand grenades and DPOY, right? Those are the three areas <laughs> you win. You you add a DPOY to the list now? Yeah, I did. Horseshoes, <laughs> hand grenades, and DPOY. <laughs> Lori did. says almost sacks. Almost sacks is what they are. That's exactly what you know, they are. That's it. Don and it was a fan of LC Greenwood's work. I was really young, okay, mm -hmm. but I remember. Uh, I, re I remember the the steel curtain from the standpoint of just the overall intimidation factor. Yeah. Like, really difficult to match in football history what those guys did. Uh, my late mom was friends with Dwight White. I don't uh -huh. think I've ever told you that. Uh uh no, you yeah. haven't, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were they were they were they were good friends way later in his life. Uh, so Dwight White, Elsie Greenwood, Mean Joe Green, uh, Ernie Arrowhead, Holmes. There's just you know it was an amazing group yeah. that you know for years and years at Three River Stadium. I'm going to start getting all wacky. Here. I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you know what's what's fascinating? Why too, wouldn't is, they be in? Is what I'm saying. I'm 100 percent with you, man. Um, and if you look back also, LC Greenwood's career too. Just to go here real quick, it wasn't until his fifth year, as far as the national praise and recognition came, right? The Pro Bowl first one, and then the next year, man. Crazy, uh, finished sixth in defensive player of the year votes. You know who was number one? Mm -mm. His teammate, Joe Green. Oh, that's right, pal. <laughs> Joe, but, but this is this is what I always warn people about when it comes down to like development of player. You know, I always say that your sweet spot as far as developing after year three, what they say, give me three years, right, DK? Yeah, yeah. And if you look at him, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine were his years which is crazy. The all pros came, the pro bowls came and stuff like that. I just also want to use his career as a testament into development, even going back to the seventies, DK, like it, it, some of the, the systems and how the NFL talent operates is simply just that man. It's about year three, four is where you find out who you're going to be and what you are as a player. And here we are speaking about LC Greenwood and what he's capable, what he was capable of doing in his career. Yeah, I just I thought that was fun. It's also a reminder as some of uh, some of our community have already brought up today is just the reach of this show, the expanse of Steelers Nation, crazy, uh, and and the connections that get formed, and you just never know. You know, I know this stuff brings a smile to your face. Nice. I know you love it <laughs> Be because I just got off. I, I had a Zoom meeting a second ago with some people um, that I'm communicating with. And you know why my involvement is in it, too, especially on the football stiller side, too. It's because, DK, I'm a yinzer. One place. You bring that up often, right? Oh, yeah. Be you're, because – You're part of a single family here. The sports world is super unique, right, with everybody moving to different places. You might – and the connectivity of social media has somewhat made it easier to keep up with guys and maneuver and stuff like that. But belonging to one place has its benefits, DK, and – um, that's how you come on a podcast like this and, and have your, your, your son, um, uh, participate in it. That's crazy. 
Yeah, I, I'm actually really into this. I, I my jaw dropped. I was just going through the comments. The ones that, these are not the ones that, that are during the live show, by the yeah. way. Uh, these are the ones that come in afterward, and I yeah. was like, wow. All right. Well, when we come back, we're gonna get to the only segment that actually matters. By the way, everybody made it to us on a Monday too, but that's hey Moan. And also, while we on break, hit that like and subscribe button, okay? And send it to a friend to tell a friend about. It. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. Oh, man, good stuff here. Justin comes in and says, one thing I love about being a Steelers fan in Canada is that when I run into other Steelers fans, all of us know the shared rich history of the team and its players. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that, too. It's not just you don't come in and become a Steelers fan and just learn the guys on the current 53. Right. No, no. no. (laughs) You're not going to get by with that. No one's going to let you get away with that. That's what bugged me out more than anything, DK, was being an undrafted guy. An undrafted guy, DK, who was known around the city. Like, And it's just like, well, they don't just know of you. They know you. you know. And that's why I think the standards are so high when it comes down to getting back to winning ways. And here's the thing. So I say that as if this is a low, downtrodden organization. We just ain't won a Super Bowl in a while. And, and, and I'm talking about getting back to winning ways, right? Imagine that being the case for you when you got a team in your division like the Browns or you got the Jags for a very long time or a multitude of different teams that have not, as of late, in the current state of football, DK, had a – I hate to even say this crap because I hate that it's a thing – a losing season or tank season, right? Mm-hmm. Almost every other team has had – even the beloved uh, New England Patriots – had a tank season, and I had another one this year. It happens. I mean, professional sports in general are cyclical. To have the kind of success, the kind of success, never mind the multiple waves or generations of success that the Steelers have had, uh, that's some pretty rare air. And as Tube Dude points out, it begins, and it's a point you've made yourself, Moan, many times, it begins with the culture. It does. It does. Um, I did somebody else's podcast today, man, here in Nashville. And uh, hit this this guy was asking me about um, what was that Super Bowl team like, right? What was the one that we I went to in 2010? And I brought up, you got to have the right type of injuries, not happen, a little bit of luck, and uh, defense, right? And he brought up another point, DK, that I thought that was super crazy. And it was the culture. This was a baseball guy who's like the locker room, Ramon. He was like, that also has to matter. What a coach ain't coaching you no more. You're self-policing. I was just like, you think back to that team, and I'm sure it was like that in those times that you covered that 05 team, DK, and Mm -hmm. in 2018. Coach didn't have to really coach a lot. Coward or Tomlin, as far as the requirements and the expectation. I'd only imagine what it was on the winning side of it because when we lost in 2010, that January 2011, like there wasn't much that you could say to us that we weren't already telling each other. Like, that matters a lot. So culture does matter, man, a lot. Jim wants to know if it was LC that had the gold cleats. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that and again, that was at a time when uniform violations and stuff were just unheard of. Those guys had some character. They were the – and I, I say this in, with immense respect. They were the badasses in every room that they walked into. Yeah, facts. And – Moan, that stuff matters, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, it does. The, even just the intangibles in it, any winning atmosphere. I'm talking about it. Just it speaks for itself, DK. That's what it, it speaks for itself, man. Yeah, Hanover Fist says LC paid a fine every game. <laughs> there was a line of those guys that yes, were paying is. fines. <laughs> uh, let's let's get to some hey moans here. We got some pretty good ones. I've been starring here and setting off to the side here. Chris says. He, he wants to know from you if the O-line o- looks deep enough in this draft, Moan. Deep, DK. That's my sound right there. Sorry about that. Uh, deep Tackles. as ever. 
Uh, no, tackles, centers, and guards. All three position has somebody there for you, DK. It is a deep group, man, and um, I had some stuff signed too. Is there anybody that stood out for me um, more than anything? And it was – It's right here, yep. Yeah. Uh, hey, mom, any fist. favorites? Mm-hmm. In any favorites, man, and it, it's all about where Pittsburgh is picking to where that type of stuff comes into play. So you release Chooks, right? So there's something to be said about do you upgrade again at tackle? If, in my opinion, I think the NFL is going to get back, DK, look at me real quick on this one. I think it's going to get back to a run heavy. I do. And I think bigs are going to matter more because defenses, for the most part, have gotten smaller, quicker, and I want to say more movable. And you got a guy out of Georgia, again, Amarius Mims, who I like, ran pretty much a five-flat, at 340 pounds. We talked about cyclical. We have nothing more cyclical in football than the exchange or the the, the, the scales between the run and the pass. Oh, my gosh. What happens? They say, all right, we can go six defensive backs. Okay, and you go, oh, no, our passing game is really going to suffer for this. What should we do? And somebody in the room says, why don't we just steamroller them? <laughs> Facts. Right? Facts. You as an offensive lineman, when you're looking out there at a whole bunch of defensive backs and they tell you to go next level on the block, oh, right? They're going to shake me out of my shoes, DK, and make a tackle for loss. That's what's going to happen. So what do you do? You get a bunch of bigs that lean on them. D- don't quote me this because I've heard others have this conversation before, y'all. The NFL is gradually going to transition over to a run-first style of game again. Probably, and maybe not as much as it once was when you had the Bettises and and those types of guys in the running back game, like LaDainian Tomlinson's and all of those. I don't think you're going to see that era, but I think you're going to see more of a steady, yes, Avery, bully ball style of football coming back because the game is just too complex when it comes down to (laughs) hogs, okay? (laughs) All of the offensive, not big ugly. My wife also said, why y'all got to be the big uglies? I think you handsome as heck. I was like, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) Nice interjection there. (laughs) But all of those names, I think, think will come back. Here's the other thing, too. These big guys aren't the big guys of the 90s and even early 2000s. You got a guy in Amarius Mims. If y'all hadn't seen a picture of him, he's 346 or 342, and he looked like he's 315. You got a 6'8 dude in Joe Alt, who the Steelers have no chance on getting in no. the top 10 pick, who's 6'9, 323, and ran pretty much a five flat. Those dudes are changing. If you look at the list of offensive linemen that ran, I know I'm going on a tangent right here because oh, I'm excited it's good. about this it's stuff. Good, yeah. If you look at the guards, centers, and tackles, they're all five flat type of dudes, five ones, not many five twos, man. And of course, you got your five fours and stuff like that. There's room for those guys too, but it's crazy. Mims ran a five two at, at 340. Okay. He, uh, Hanover Fist said he ran a 5-2. Yeah, there's – 340. That, that's crazy stuff. I, I just – I think that when you when you look at uh, that position in general, tackle, uh, you and I have talked a lot about Chooks Okorafor and his, and his build and how almost unfair he, he looks. Okay, yeah. that's not to say Chooks was the greatest. Da, 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 da. We've gotten into his flaws and some of the things that he – Hopefully for him, still work out for him wherever it is that he goes. Right. But from the specimen standpoint, my God, okay, yeah. this this isn't somebody who's walking around carrying a, a ton of excess weight or whatever. No. He is just a monster of a human. And it, that's different. That's it different. Is. And, and that's why I say I think you'll be capable of running a up-tempo style of offense right? An up-tempo style of offense, but the ability to lean on people, like I hate to even mention Georgia because they're my college, one of my college rivals, but they're putting out even Broderick last year, uh, uh, Amarius Mims this year. You got CJ Latham out of Alabama. That's a 340 guy that's moving as a projected first rounder. All and uh, Fashino, uh, Olu Fashino out of Penn State, solid, solid dudes. But it didn't, again, I brought up to you guys the idea that uh, my guy, Jackson Powers Johnson, right? It's a dude that weighed in at the draft at, what is he, 6'3", 328 at center, okay? 
that that is a load of a man when it comes down to it. He didn't do anything as far as his 40. But check this out, DK. We're talking about 328 pounds and jumped a 32-inch vertical. Yeah, I, I can't even process that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just think that's – that's yeah, that's insane. Dwight Jefferson wants to check on your 40 time. Oh my, five too slow. <laughs> that's what moving, that's what considering <laughs> I was a five five and a five six. Uh not ta- NFL tackle speed, which is why I moved inside. Um, I think there's a few other guys that had similar times this weekend. They'll probably be NFL guards, especially if they sit around that five uh six five, well, under six six height. You're you're an NFL guard when you run that speed right there. Tyler Bristol has a has a question from the uncle's table. And before we get to it, if you'd like to do what Tyler is about to do and leave the uncle's table and make it over to, you know, you're right. Get you a red solo cup. We got some good stuff for people not at the uncle's table. Go okay? to dkps.net slash join. Simple as that. Type in it in your URL, dkps.net slash join to become a member. You know, Rochelle can't carry everybody here, although she certainly tries. <laughs> she she certainly she certainly <laughs> tries. Uh, Tyler asks, hey, Moan, do you believe that upgrades in the weight room, nutrition, diet, training room, and training staff uh, would, would be are beneficial for the player's health or well-being? Uh, that obviously became a, a discussion point recently with an NFLPA wow. survey. Um, you know, it, how big of a deal is that to the players? Uh, here's my thing. Um, this is from the NFLPA survey, as you just said. Yeah, they spoke on weight room, nutrition, training room, training staff, and all that type of stuff. Is there benefit to it? Heck yes. If I can centrally locate every all your services to one place, I'd much rather have it that way. This yeah. ain't no knock or you know, anti Mr. Rooney when you say this type of stuff, but when you find out other teams have these things and they may equate to them winning more games or staying on the field longer times, then I think there is a benefit for it. Here's the thing, though. The the NFL owners don't have a baseline into what they're required to purchase and buy and provide for you. They're required to have a facility to practice out of, meet certain baselines as it pertains to expectations. But we found out in about 20... 14, 15, maybe, maybe earlier, maybe later, that the Seattle Seahawks have a cryotherapy in their building. Pittsburgh also has no room for growth when it comes down to adding more stuff either to the weight room, uh, to the training room. Like a lot of guys that, that leave my university, University of Tennessee, and go to Pittsburgh, probably look at the facility as a downgrade. And truthfully, it is because the colleges provide you with so much more. Because they're trying to sell you on those facilities. You know what and they're I not sport? paying their players yet. <laughs> okay, just just checking here. <laughs> and that's what I was gonna say. I've always been told in Pittsburgh, right, wrong, or indifferent. Hey, you're paid to take care of the rehab yourself. And other teams may be more fluid with cash to provide that type of stuff. There should be, and this is a CBA negotiated thing, baselines for what every franchise should have. If you don't have to spend it and you're running a business. Would you like, I, I love to know that answer. Would you spend it if you didn't have to? Yeah. I mean, I I agree that that should be in the CBA. There are things that are required of owners uh, in all labor agreements, the minimum, this, and that there's even rules about, uh, you know, bus rides from here to there, making buses available from the team hotel to the stadium, even if the team hotel is quite literally right next to the stadium. Yeah. And this does happen. Uh, there, there's things that they have to follow, but there's also things that they don't have to follow. In theory, I would imagine that there's people who feel that, you know, from a from a free agency standpoint, that that could kind of police itself. Because you're a free agent, you'd walk in there and go, eh, this isn't for me. I'm out of here that amounts to the money being paid out to or what you want to play. That's where I will say the one a that you did get the coach Mm -hmm. that may be the selling rate right there real quick. DK uh, Hovane bring up a point $4.6 billion. Where's Art Rooney putting his money? Hovane is two separate things. That's his valuation. That's not what he has in pocket. Yeah. It's not cash. The franchise is worth that. Yeah, there's a difference between I, I hear that a lot in the town where the people criticize the Pirates owner, Bob Nutting, and not without cause, but they refer to him as this multi-billionaire because of the valuation of the Pirates. No, 
he he'll be that someday if he sells it. If he sells it, which would only be cause for a parade here. Uh, so rich owners across the league: Jerry, Seattle, L.A., Jacksonville. Um, there's a lot of cash strapped teams. Uh, Carolina's another rich team. Mm -hmm. I think now Washington Commanders are rich. Like their owners they have now. money. It's gonna take yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, the Commanders have work to do with facilities. Yeah. But they See, got a conglom con conglomerate of billionaires right now. Yeah. CT says I was watching some rookie year Ramon games Ooh. on YouTube this past weekend. I'm ashamed. I got no, better. <laughs> we we will, by the way, as a society, reach the point. And I'm convinced of this, where you can say, I want to watch a game from 2015, yeah. but I only want to watch number 73. And that. the technology will be so smart that it just, it, it works off that, you know, the all 22 film. Yeah. And just zeroes in on like a little, little spotlight and you just watch nothing but Ramon reps. Right, I'm I'm with that. that I'm with that. Man. Probably, like the whole broadcast would take like about what an hour and ten minutes or something like that. Because run yeah, the plays like from that. start to just finish, just run the plays. I yeah. love it. That I that's it. where that's where film gets long. It's rewinding from the coach hole in the remote. <laughs> You're 100 mm -hmm. right about that. Mm -hmm. Corey asks, "Hey Moan, center, inside linebacker, or corner? Which would be the most important in this draft?" Oh, breaking news. Broncos release Russell Wilson. Just want to throw that in there. Um, most important eh, of that group is that inside linebacker. At 20, you such you picking the best available. If the best available of those three is still left on the board, I'm probably gonna pick a cornerback. Um, that's a sweet spot to not really invest too much inside linebacker in today's game, unless he's just him then he's probably already gone by the top 10, top 15. So cornerback will probably be the best position to be picking from at 20. Corners are loaded. They're loaded. And yeah. they got speed too. But for the Steelers, you know, I mean, let's not forget, and I know a lot of our viewers don't, that Corey Trice Jr. is still a thing. That's true too. Okay, now he's seventh rounder and all that, season-ending injury. There's going to be concerns about his rehab and so forth, but I'll take him. Rico has no use for hearing about the Steelers quarterback situation anymore. Sorry, Rico. It's kind of important. I said indigestion. Um, wow, that sucks. I can't I can't remember if Rico's a Kenny guy or not. If so, those are like the Venn diagram of people who are tired of hearing about the quarterbacks things who yeah. are Kenny people. It's like a perfect circle. I love it. You know, because they just like oh! they just, they're just oh, I didn't mean to do that. How it do won't do, do it that? for me though. You made it hard. You made a circle. Look at that. It only have, does it for you. I have no idea how that happens. Uh speaking yeah. of quarterback situation, they, they Denver just released theirs. So that's why it's important. Because there's still conversation that he may end up in Western PA. I don't believe. That he will. And, and I've been saying and, and re reporting actually for a while that the Steelers are not going to go to the outside to get a quarterback, other than if it's somebody, you know, for a three spot or something like that. Do you follow? Yeah, 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 yeah. I get uh, you. Rich, also Uncle's Table. What are we doing here, everybody? DKPS.net slash join. Rich, where's our little ruler here? Can we do a little like a little slap or something? Exactly, man. Jeez. Uh, Rich, Rich says, "What's the most difficult slash or the easiest position swap? The tackle side, guard side, or even moving into center?" Uh, most difficult position to swap, I would say, going from tackle to guard because naturally you're an athlete at that position. Probably is easier. Going anywhere to center is hard because here's the thing. You're not just uh, having your hands to use. You also have the football in your hand, too. I don't think you guys understand sometimes how hard snapping the ball, making contact, and not fumbling the snap is. That's why, to me, I know of those positions right there, I would take corner of the last ones we just talked about, inside mm -hmm. linebacker, center, or cornerback. For me, having a daggone good center alleviates a lot of problems for you. It, it, between cornerback and center, I'm gonna take the cornerback. But if you're telling me I can get Jackson Powers Johnson in in year one at 20, I'll take him if the best cornerback is gone. Kevin Schwartz points out that Trice would have been a first or second rounder, but he tore his ACL. And imagine how much more conviction 
Kevin would have been able to say this with if he were a member. If he were, come on, Kevin, come on, get the match. <laughs> That's waiting on we, you. We got there. some, we got great tequila over here and some bourbon. If you a whiskey, I mean, whatever you want, vodka, we got that too, man. And you choose to sit over there and sip some Sunny D. Uh, you sip some Sunny D, man. None of this was listed in our perks, by the way, the official perks on the YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, this is our world, DK. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Kevin says, I'm a lifetime member, but, oh, he's referring to our website. Well, we appreciate that, Kevin. We're talking about YouTube here. There's a, it's actually, it's a separate, completely separate platform uh, that, that's not connected to our website at all. But thank you so much. I, I know what he's saying now. Uh, Gimbal says, hey, Mona, I'm not sure if you guys talked about this yet, but there's rumor that, rumors that the NFL is extending the season to 18 weeks. Uh, those aren't rumors. Those are actual discussions that have occurred. Okay, there's a difference between rumors and they actually talked about this. Okay, yeah. and they did actually talk about this, and they've been talking about it for a while, haven't they, Moan? Have you heard this sort of thing back when you were player rep? What do you do in any sports that's an odd number? The only thing about the odd number that makes sense is the buy. It is the now it it's it's not the buy. It's the international game. That's it. Because then you you can say to your fans, we're not robbing you of a home game. That's fair. Okay, okay so like fair. the Eagles this year are giving up a home game to play in Sao Paulo, Brazil, possibly against the Steelers. Because the Steelers are one of the teams that has a game in Philadelphia. But they don't have to justify it. They don't have to rationalize it. And they sure don't have to apologize for it because this was a game you were never supposed to have. Exactly. So this is the 17th game. Gimbal, great freaking question. Y'all know yeah. when I brag about the um, the league having players have a million dollar min minimum within like the next few years. Yes. Like when I came in, mine was like 405. Well, this was a part of that deal. When we asked guys. or something now. Because 18 games was one. It was their joker. That they wanted as a part Always of this deal. Yep. Always the dangling carrot, right? When it comes down to this deal getting done. So what happened was they promised higher wages um with the contingency that they have the 18th game. Well, add a 17, and at some point by 2026, 20, I think they want to add an 18th. I mean, uh, yeah, an 18th game. And so when when you guys asked me earlier about why don't they have a standard baseline for training room, weight room, training staff, and all those types of things? This could have been negotiated for to make the owner spend money. But here's the other side of it, too. Would you rather that money go to something that you can pay for yourself, probably find a massage therapist for $50 instead of $150? I'm going to save money in my pocket, right? Guys elected, for the most part, to get money in hand and not have a quality of life when it comes down to either lifetime medical or facilities that you force the owners to spend money on. So instead of getting that money towards those types of things, give it to me in my pocket. And, and that's where for a player like me that see down the line a new retirement was out down closer, I much rather have the benefits than an 18th game and more money over the lifetime of it. And that's how that's how they get you. That's you know, the, the key point that you that you made there, just to emphasize it for everybody else. I know you know this, obviously. Sorry for my my union side coming out. No, but the, the 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 way that they get the way the NFL owners get to your union and have gotten to them forever is they go right past the stars, like you don't even exist, which is the exact opposite of how it happens uh in the NHL and Major League Baseball, by the way. They go right past you and they say Hey, uh, Tyler Matikavich over there in the corner. You know what hey, they I'll call them? You, huh? you, you, you core player, because it's more of you. Hey, you core players. Go ahead, DK. Mm -hmm. And they say, uh, we'll raise, you said raise wages. What you meant to clarify Salary. was to raise minimum wages. Minimum wages. Okay, because they can't raise overall wages, but they can raise the minimum, the absolute minimum that you can be paid. If you're a special teams frills guy who it was the 52nd choice in Latrobe. Roosevelt Knicks. You are that guy, and you will be paid that much money. And that's how they get you, because your vote counts as much as Tom Brady's. It just does. Yeah. That's the only area in which everybody's equal in the NFL, is when you cast a vote for the labor agreement. And you know what sucks about that, though, DK? Mm. Joseph Arroyo, real quick. 
posted this right here a second ago. Mike Evans is signed by Tampa Bay for two years, $52 million. That money that we all gain because of TV, gambling, big-time contracts, Amazon, it it's still going to go to them dudes. Yes, yeah, and that doesn't change. It does not get it, spread. It does not get spread, DK. Sorry, y'all, I went on that one. But that's the point. Guys chose the money now instead of facilities, benefits, and all those types of things. Being a union rep for your professional team – is by far the most thankless job ever. I might as well, DK, just sit here for an hour and bang my head on this this. microphone. (laughs) I know what's best for you. They've got it down, though. They've got it down, and there's nothing that Demar Smith or the the rest of the union leadership or Troy Vincent or those guys, there's not – I know you know know all these guys, the head of the union leadership. There's nothing they can do about it because they can't – walk over and ask i'm using him symbolically here tyler matikavich to go along with something that only favors tom brady and mike evans yep because the thing about a guy who's a special team player or a backup is this they're not guaranteed to be in the league long term so let me get as much money as i possibly can right now uh pittsburgh (sighs) hornets has a really weird question here i love that Oh, hey, yeah. Mo, do you see the SEC? This, for those of you who, like me, don't follow college football, <laughs> is the Southeastern Conference. And Big Ten, which is another college football conference, leaving and forming minor league teams? Or do you see the NFL creating an associated minor league? How would you do that? I don't think the NFL can get in bed with them right now as far as amateurism go. But even my university is talking about in the next couple of years employing guys paying guys a contract to stay at the university because of NIL and because of the transfer portal and stuff like that. Guys are closer to being paid employees. So you asked me the question, do you see the SEC and Big Ten leaving? Yes. You know why? Respectfully to your ACC folks, they are the main ones that send the most players into the NFL. When it comes down to them doing this college football playoff, they're asking for a bigger share of the pie as far as the overall revenue split because they can uh, can account for having the most teams being added to it. There's also a situation now in the ACC for you people, ACC fans, who now have Clemson and Florida State and others considering coming to the SEC. So they're getting bigger. We just took on in the SEC Texas and Oklahoma. You got the Big Ten now that took on USC and also UCLA and Oregon. And I may be missing out on one more team. They're not, we're talking about the Big Ten. You're talking about historic Pac 12 schools moving to the Big Ten. So, DK, the powers have gotten bigger. Right now, Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC and college sports, might be the most powerful commissioner in all the sports besides Roger Goodell. <laughs> Like, it's I'm, serious, just, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'll take your word for it. This is your farm I, league now. Well, here's where it gets interesting, though, and this is where I take the Hornets thing here uh, seriously, and that is that if if you had a system, and think about this. Let's say it's college football. Let's say yeah. it is the SEC, Big Ten, ACC, whoever CC, and you say to yourself, listen, we're going to be football's minor leagues. But the player can come back and play for us even after they've been drafted. Think about this for a second. This is this actually is the case in the National Hockey League, where if you can be drafted and then you can still go back to college. Okay, mm-hmm. so you do your developing in college. This is very common route for American players, not Canadian players, or not obviously Europeans. But for, for American players, they go back to college. That way the players get their education and everything else while they you know build up their frames and everything else. And by the time they're 21, 22 years old, they're ready to skate in the NHL. Where, where football is concerned, that sounds damn good to me. It does. Okay? It, who, who loses in that scenario? Who loses in that scenario? No, yeah. uh, nobody, essentially, right, DK, when it comes down to it? You have a college that you get assigned to as an NFL team. Uh, your quarterbacks, is something we've talked a lot about, continue to develop, okay? And you have someone like, I mean, you know, we've talked about Kenny Pickett staying at Pitt for half a decade, okay? <laughs> but 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 now yeah. he would be able, he would be eligible or whatever to be drafted early on. You send him back. You monitor his development. He's your guy. 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Only only pushback as I have is having a a guy that's I, I think this too in football when you've hit that ceiling, I don't think there's much more to go to. I don't. So let's go for the the. This is my I'm 24 no 25 26 years old defensive lineman going against an 18 year old high schooler. Oh, no. yeah, there's got to be a cutoff. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, you, you're talking about it, risking injury and so forth. You, there's got to be a cutoff in football of all sports. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you're 20, no, if you're a 21 year old draft pick, and you get to Latrobe and they look at you and they go, "Man, not yet." But you don't want him to sit on the sideline all year long, okay? And you definitely yeah. don't want to cut him. So you say, "Listen, we're going to send you back to college for another year." Back in college, you're a star. You're continuing your education and everything else, and you're playing football. You're not frozen in time with your development. What I have seen, though, on the NFL Network is the Rock and His Spring League has gotten a lot of promo. So I'm guessing that's probably going to be an avenue that they ex- uh, explore here uh, more moving forward. Still no affiliation, though. We can no, talk you're right. NFL all we want, but until there's an affiliation with the National Football League, it doesn't make any sense. You know, the NFL needs minor leagues in they some do. form. It doesn't matter what it is. They need to be able to not have a Mason Rudolph standing on the sideline or worse, just holding a clipboard without a uniform on and for reps. five years. Yeah, and reps yeah. and competition and, and learning from film instead of having Mason. Mason tell the story about how he studied that film of himself in against the Detroit Lions from three years ago to the point where he could even memorize the commercials. Crazy. Okay. I mean, yeah. That's what we're talking about here. Let's take a couple more here uh, today. Well, we first acknowledge that this program is sponsored by Rochelle Barnes. We're brought to you by Rochelle Barnes. We need a slogan. For, we need a slogan for her, though, because then, then it sounds cooler. Um... Where... Da 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 da. You know, I think we can effort that. We can effort that, DK. Yeah, somebody's going to come up with one here. We're one of one of the the workers here can can do that. Uh, we've had a couple people asking if you're if how you feel about possibly trading Deontay Johnson. Are you in favor yeah. of such a thing? I saw. By that the way, that's I'm, not that's not going to happen. Incidentally, and I, I Rob also had the same answer. The rumors yeah. is what they are. People um, are bored. I think you can always make a case. Here's the thing that you know, how conspiracies work. If there is an ounce of truth, then it, it, it solidifies what the person is somewhat telling you a line. So you're giving the half truth of what it is. Right. And Deontay's in a situation where you got a new OC, you you got him uh, possibly at the latter part of his contract with the Steelers, probably thinking to yourself, how do we get more out of him before we have to just set him loose as a free agent? That's where that type of conversation comes into play. I think Deontay is a solid guy on this team. I don't think there's a – I think there's a non-issue when it comes down to him and George Pickens too. Oh, they, they get along. Yeah, that's what I'm they saying. get along. Yeah. De- uh, let me say this real quick. Deontay Johnson is not a toxic locker room No, guy. he's anything but. He'll have his lapses on the field but not in the room. So here's the other thing, too, that we've heard as far as the leadership inside of the wide receiver room. Deontay did a good bit of that last year as, as far as trying to help grow and be a leader in that room. Why would you leave George Pickens? I love him. But why are you going to give him the key to your Ferrari? No, you're not Respect. doing that. He, he needs he a couple to Deontay. Yes. Yes. Uh, if it happens, you should get a nice ransom for a guy like that, okay? For Deontay. You also – uploads his contract but i personally don't see a reason to why give up a weapon when <laughs> if if those other rumors we heard this weekend they're trying to surround kenny pickett why would you trade them no they're not doing that this is a this is such a dry time of year moan for steelers news and the people who exist on, oh, my God, I've got to have traffic. I've got to have traffic, whether it's for a website or a video or whatever it is. I got to have traffic, got to have traffic. But there's nothing there. Can't just relax and talk about whatever actually is there or what's right. real. So you get stuff that's just completely made up. You really and, do, man. And, and, um, and, and that's what this is. I've seen and we talked about this earlier. Now in sports journalism, people just report and hope that you forget when they lie to you. Yeah, but that's not reporting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and they do, and they count on people just be 
coming back to Lucy and the football again and again and no, again and again. No. So saying, yeah, but wasn't that individual wrong like a thousand times? Yeah, yeah but where there's smoke, yeah, you know, get out of here. Exactly. It's you know? uh, conspiracy. That's why I, I'm going to just – I offer one very few complaints about our, our group here because we love them, but every silly, ridiculous thing – I see a bunch of comments like, can you talk about this crazy thing that nobody believes? No. Why? Uh, Deontay's not going anywhere. Yeah, I feel you, man. Uh, Rob Thomas puts in here, I'm a Deontay defender till I die. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you, yeah. That, I, I, I don't defend Deontay unconditionally. I mean, I was really critical of him after that, watching that fumble. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that has to be. A, that's what it was. I, I'm, Believe me, I was the least in his world. I was the least important person who would have been critical of him. He heard no it from everybody in yeah, that he room. Did. Hey, no he question probably, about that. He probably muted his mentions. That's what we do. <laughs> there's, there's some of that that goes on. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna we're gonna take care of some business here on the Ramon Foster Show. Please, we'll be right back. Rico getting testy here. I like Kenny Pickett, but I am not a Pitt guy. Don't <laughs> insult me. I am a Penn State grad. I could not care less who's quarterback as long as they win. Then the best part, don't make that mistake again. Rico's in a bad mood, and he's and he's taking it out on me. I see I this here. It, he's still dropping a $10 bill while he's it. doing it. Just to I get his point across. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Stand on business, Rico. That's it here. Uh, Jared came in today with 10 gift memberships. Uh, Broderick came in with five. Joshua Dobbs came in with five. Larry Brown with five. Cody came in with 10. Uh, Fishing for Trout, who's a regular in this world, with five. Just feel like reading these off. Though. And we haven't had one of these splurges here in a while from the group. Papa oh, Ray God. with 20. And uh, always the grand finale, the fireworks that, that fill up the sky. Rochelle. The Rochelle. We're brought to you by Rochelle. Shit. Where da -da 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 -da. we need something. We need something to fill that out. No doubt, man. I don't know. I like the barn's last name. Maybe it's something about a barn or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. We got to figure something out, though, for her. Something like that. What's 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 Ramon instigating here? What's that all about? Tell Enrico stand on business, Rico. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I love about him more than anything? Huh. Don't don't ever mention him as a pit grab, man. Pin state through and through, baby. I, I'm neither. Okay. Yeah. I, I went to Duquesne yeah. and I didn't even finish, so I really don't care. But we're <laughs> where Pitt and Penn State are concerned, there's this amazing relationship between the two where Penn State people pr pretend to not care about Pitt. Oh, really? But, but yet, yeah, but yet when you push their buttons, they f flip out over it. It's hilarious. Oh, wait, I thought you didn't care about Pitt. Really? Oh, yeah. I, I remember hilarious. when Pittsburgh, when that series came back, because didn't they take a break for a little while, I think between uh, mm -hmm. Paterno? And yeah, like, like 40 years or something. Yeah, yeah. now they're going to do it for another 40 years because – college football why would you not makes, have that series that makes no sense that's to me. why though it's, it's it's a penn state thing they hate they hate even acknowledging that beat there's a second down. university yeah it's crazy well, right well beat them down then Pitts, pittsburgh and the surrounding areas have some great talent out there go get them and, and show them why you big brother yeah well they compete for recruiting that's for sure they compete in state for recruiting d rock dan is going to get us closed today with a contribution of his own and a question, says, hey, Mo, do you think 3-33 and 33 would be a good contract offer for Mason Rudolph? Do you think That'd that would get perfect. it done? I'm telling you, this it, is it, what it I It feels that say. way, right? It does. It'd be perfect. But here's the other thing, though, D-Rock. If you sign in the backup for 3-33, for 33, one, the length of that <clears> tells <throat> me that he's going to be there for two years. A three-year deal to me is a two-year deal, unless Mason goes up and stink it up, okay? Period. I've seen a guy down here in Nashville sign a similar deal. Uh, we did a three-year, 30-ish, 28 and he stunk it up in year one, and he's going to be cut. Oh, a yeah. three-year three -year deal is a two-year deal. At that yeah. money right there, even at a bargain that it is, sorry to tell you, but that's also your <clears> starter, <throat> too. Like, like that's that's the other side of that. Andrew Star Stafford gives it a shot here. He says, brought to you by Rochelle Barnes, always farming for new members. See. Farming, Barnes. 
Farming Barnes. There we Farming go. Barnes. Uh, no. what, 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 what's in that? What's in that? Ro- Rochelle herself hasn't come up with one yet. Oh, Rochelle. Rochelle. Oh, Rochelle. Oh, that's what, this is what she's referring to. Rochelle and her daily blessings. That's awesome. So Last we got word. a Rochelle and Rochelle. Yeah, how about that, huh? I like that. I have a Last Rochelle. word of the day, and this is accurate, actually. I don't yeah, read right. that a fire here. No, but it's true. <laughs> Stop it. Don't because you dare they're, read they're, that out loud. They're afraid of the upset. Because the upset has happened. Okay, little old Pitt? Oh, yeah. Little old Pitt sends all these guys to the NFL, Moan. You know that. Oh, I know, I know. I'm I not talking about to... Kenny. I'm talking about a bunch of guys. Look at all the guys they have in the Hall of Fame. I know. They can never really put together something, you know, that's, you know, that's what it is here. Oh, here we go. Now I got started. <laughs> See? You know Vegas says doing. Rochelle Barnes is so noble. That's a good place to end the show. Yes. Oh my god. You didn't get that, did you? Barnes and uh, Noble. Uh, oh, Barnes and Noble books. Come on, gotcha. on. Yeah. Oh, oh. The, the gallery here says that was really good. That was not the good dollar. No. He's playing it was around. Not. It Look was at not. what you started, man. You are an instigator worse than I am. Look at this. Not afraid of pit. No <laughs> one fears pit. Oh wow, DK. They're even calling you a dog for a comment like that. Pitt would play Penn State every year happily. Penn State won't play Pitt. Oh, we don't need to play Pitt. And I'm sounding like a Pitt guy now here. It's just lame. It's a fantastic – it's a spectacle. Hey. 90% of the games that are on Penn State's existing schedule. Look at Oh, we would rather play. Crickets. We would rather play Kent State and beat them by 110 or something, you know? Oh, me oh my. Look at you choosing violence today, dog. Now, see, Rochelle's on my side because she went to Duquesne. Duquesne. You see that? That's that's, that's called Duquesne. <laughs> took me forever to figure out who people were, what word people was talking about Duquesne. That's Duquesne. That's right. Yeah, she said She said here, she, the, the boss chimes in that Rochelle finished her education, unlike me, which is why she can afford sponsoring this program. And I just work education. here. Education. That's right. That's right. I'll be 11 credits shy for the rest of my life. I love this trash talk from Pitt Pitt fans. Denial runs through Happy Valley. (laughs) See, this is why college football is good. It gets the people going, DK. Yeah, I can see that. I I can see that. Uh, All right, guys. Let's do it again tomorrow here before this gets out of hand, if it hasn't already. But look who actually gets the last word that basically just QB1. We sneak that in. Arkwright. See y'all. Peace.